Rising food prices and food security have put GM crops back on the agenda. So for Farmers Weekly, I've come to Aberdeenshire to meet Shirley Harrison, a woman who knows more than just about any farmer in the country about the practicalities of growing GM crops. You're in New Craig at my farm in Aberdeenshire and the field behind us here was the very first field on a commercial scale that grew the GM crops for the farm trial evaluations in the year 2000, exactly eight years ago today. What was it, Shirley? It was a GM spring oilseed rape that we put in. Half the field was the GM variety and the other half was a conventional variety. What inspired you to get involved in those trials in the first place? I think being a farmer, like most farmers, if you are a livestock farmer, sheep and beef, you always deal in genetics. Um, genetics are all important for breeding cattle. And when they first spoke about um, genetically modified uh, uh, plants, crops, it's the interest, Nancy. It's just the sheer interest because this is a breeding tool. And I felt that there's such merit in this particular breeding tool. And how many years did you do it? I did it in uh, 2000, 01 and 02. And then the, the winter one would have been harvested in 03. And then I did a further separate trial for volunteers in 04. So it was four year period. What was the point of the trials, Shirley? And how closely monitored were they? The point of the trials was simply um, to ascertain the difference between managing a field of um, genetically modified crop against the conventional management of a field. We were very closely monitored. You know, you had a lot of forms to fill up for the background of the field itself, everything that's gone into that. And then um, SCRI from Dundee, uh, they would come up probably on about a, almost a weekly basis to, to look at the field to see for the sampling for you know bees, butterflies, insects, weeds, all, all that type of thing. And how did growing GM crops differ from growing conventional grain? It, it was a lot easier. Um, this is what I found. When you, you, you drill the seed in both sides and normally with the conventional one you have a, a like a blanket spray before that seed comes up because the seed is so, the seedling is so tiny it ha would, would have to compete against a lot of weeds grasses growing now on the GM side that seed comes up along with all the the weeds and grass seeds that are already there you don't have to use a blanket spray and then when the crop is growing all we used was just one a spray you know of um, glyphosate to, to knock out everything other than the oilseed rape that was growing so just one spray normally I have to use a three spray herbicide because of the wild oats that grow in the field. And how unusual was that for you as a farmer to treat your crop in that way? Well it is unusual because Normally you have various chemicals which knock out different types of weeds and grass and also you have, it's the growth of the weeds that grow up because when you put your blanket um, spray on the seeds of the altered rape come through but then about a fortnight later you'll get the emergence of weeds and grass seed coming so that's when you wait for it to grow up again then you have to go on with another spray but with the GM side you wait about a fortnight and it looks just like a, a grassy mat. You can hardly see the seedlings. And then you go on and spray. And you only need the one spray because by that time, that crop is growing so fast that it will form the canopy, which knocks out all the weeds. So you don't have to spray again. So there was a, a cost benefit from in not having to spray more than once. But what about yields? How did they differ? Yes, what impressed me was the yield. I don't know whether they had anticipated a higher yield, but you have less, there's less um, problems, there's less, you know, that the crop is healthier because you've taken out all the weeds that do contribute diseases into oilseed rape. So you've taken them all out. So the rape is just clean to grow. And I had a tremendous yield increase on the GM rape as opposed to the non-GM rape. You had to dump the harvest, didn't you? So you weren't able to make a profit from that extra yield? 
No, this was the, the sad thing about it. You know, as a farmer, you plant the seed in the ground and you watch it grow and you know that one day you're going to harvest it and then it will go into the food chain. But this had to go into, we harvested it and it went into one ton bags and then the bags were just dumped in a, um, a, a tip somewhere. You to put up with demonstrators, damage to the crops and a lot of hassle while you were doing the research and the trials. Was it worth it? Yes, I, well, because this was the first field, it obviously attracted, you know, everybody in Scotland that was anti-GM. And there was a lot of um, protesters that chanced their arm to come and destroy the crop. The, the crop itself, I mean, it, it was damaged in places, but not enough damage so the SCI couldn't get the information from, so the field was not a write-off. I think it, looking back, well, during the time of it, I wondered why on earth am I doing this? Why am I putting my farm up so all these people can just wander about and destroy whatever they want to do on it? And then you had all the, you know, the police and, and everybody else coming up here, which was a bit of a pain because I've got other, pro other you know, fields which all required my attention, plus the cattle. But looking back on it, you forget all the nasties that happen and you just feel, you know, a pride that you were, in fact, a pioneer, you know, in the UK doing this type of crop work. The conclusion was, after these trials, that GM technology wouldn't be used in Europe at all. Do you feel that it was a waste of your time now? Well, Nancy, in actual fact, we were always told that probably from the year 04, um, GM crops would be, you know, widely grown within the UK. Um, as for Europe, I don't know. We were only concerned with Scotland and the rest of the UK. So that is what we were given to indicate that this is what would happen. As the time went on, we got to 04, 05, 06, and obviously it became patently clear that it was not going to happen. And I just feel that we have lost such a standing start here. We were head and tails above everybody, head and shoulders above the lot. SCRI and Dundee had every, they had people from um, the rest of the world, the scientists coming to see them. But we've lost it, Nancy, because it takes an awful long time to, it's, it's not just a GM crop that you're talking about. There are different varieties and they may not grow, they have to be tested. It takes a long time to bring the variety to a market. So it's not just GM crops. We, we, I think we've probably set agriculture back by about 15 to 20 years now. So if you got the go-ahead, would you grow it again? I would do, yes. But what worries me is, because of this anti-feeling and um, the current government stance that they do not want GM, the plant breeders, it's a commercial business. They're not in it for charity. They've gone elsewhere. The scientists have gone elsewhere, out of the country. So there's virtually nobody now left in the UK that's actually growing GM crops or trying to do different varieties. So even if it was approved today, we haven't got the crops to grow. We would have to bring them in from Canada, the seed in from Canada to grow it, because we don't have our own anymore. So this field, Shirley, which will go down in history, which lies below the standing stones up on the hillside oh, yeah. there, it looks pretty bare at the moment, but there is something in there, isn't there? Yes, we, we had a window of opportunity um, the other week to get in with spring barley. and. As you can see at the moment, there is no spring barley, but in a, in a oh, couple of days we get some sunshine, it uh, leap through the ground. Now, if there's any problem with um, volunteers of any um, grass and weeds, we'll simply go on with a specified herbicide so that at the end of the day it'll just be spring barley that's growing in that field. Are you proud of what you've done, Shirley? Yes, I am. I, 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 I don't want to be too smug, but yes, I am. Um, it's, uh, genetics is an interesting subject and I've really enjoyed and I've learnt an awful lot with it.